I'm not a spontaneous person. Are you going to joke for scripted? You'll never know. <laughs> Did you think it was that scripted? <laughs> We're going to talk about the chain rule today. Chain rule, oh man, it's so cool. It lets you tie all this calculus stuff together. Uh, this is the last major rule that we have. We will talk about implicit differentiation, which leads us to related rates, something very useful for you. Uh, but as far as the rules go, this is it. This is the last derivative rule that you get. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much just applications. So that's kind of nice, right? So basically the rules are product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. Uh, most of your calculus rests on that. Most of your derivative rests on those, those rules. So what this is, what the chain rule does, it gives you a way to do derivatives with compositions. So it lets you take derivatives by using compositions. And just to refresh your memory on why we might do this, uh, I'll give you that example again. I, it's on the last video, so I want to make sure it's on this one as well. Uh, this is the reason why we want to learn the chain rule. Uh, I gave you this to you earlier. I said, can you take the derivative of that thing? Yes. Easily. In fact, if I, if I did this, derivative would be 6x, and then you're done, right? And I, I, I built on it a little bit. I said, OK, well, what if it's not that? What if it is? squared, could you still take the derivative? Yeah. And it says, yeah, you probably foil that out, right, distribute it, and then take it term by term. I said, okay, well, what happens if it's, if it's cubed, and you go, I can still do the same thing, or, I could, or use pro the product rule, I could still do that. Distribute one of them, use product rule. But as soon as we get to things like this, and I think this is where I went the oh crap, <laughs> right, you go, come on, man, are you serious? Do we really have to do that? Yeah. But if you think you're going to distribute this 100 times, I mean, that, that's just a waste of time. So there's got to be a better way to do derivatives of this. And as a matter of fact, there is. And it's actually not hard. It, it's kind of an easy way to do it. And you're going to like this. So all the times where you had to distribute, remember, like when you had the squared, you had to distribute that, right? Like in the, the first set of homework, you're like, oh, man, it's tedious. Well, and the tedium. Now this takes care of that. So anytime you can see a composition, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the composition here in a second, you can use the chain rule. So I come with theme music now. <laughs> All right. The question is, can I express this thing as a composition? Which is why I had you cover compositions and, and had you go with the reverse of compositions, looking for a function within a function. That's why we did that. So when we get to this point, like, oh yeah, I kind of understand that idea now. So, can I express this as a composition? And the answer is, yeah, I can. And here's how you do it. Here's a, a pretty basic way to do these things. What you're going to do, you're going to cover up the inside of your function. So, what I mean by the inside here is the, the 3x squared minus 4. You with me on that? You can cover that up, and you're going to go, okay, I'm going to make a function y equal to whatever you covered up becomes an x. And you know what, let's make it a, uh, let's make it a u. A u to the 100th. Make it a u to the 100th. Do you see how, how I got that? Do you see that by, by holding this part out, I get a function that's very basic y equals u to the 100th. Do you see where the u to the 100th is coming from? But then you have another function to, to express. You now need to say, okay, well u is going to be, what did you cover up? Then that has to be your u. And that would be a very basic composition. Do you see if I put the u in for this u, this expression in for this u, I'm going to get that back again? Can you see the composition here? Basically, if you cover it up, you go, okay, that's u to the 100th, and u is what's under my hand. 
And that's, that's how we get those two things. Ridge can't be located with that so far. So sure this is a composition. That's not bad at all. Well, could you find dy du? Could you find that? What's this mean to do? Derivative of y of y with respect to what? Oh, with you. Okay, so so do it. What's the derivative with respect to u? That should be a very easy one for us. You okay with that so far? You sure? Okay. Can, could you find du dx? Could you find du dx? That's the derivative of u with respect to x. How much is that going to be? That's the 6x. Are you okay with, with these two things so far? So we write this as a composition. We take the derivative of the first expression, that's the like overlying function. We take the derivative of the inside expression, that's what we chose as our composition to compose into that. But the problem is this. What we ultimately want to find is dy dx, right? We don't have that yet. We have dy du. We have du dx. But you're going to find out right now why we stick with this notation, because this is kind of cool. Are you ready for it? If we want to get dy dx, so what about dy dx? What about dy dx? The question is, can we put these two things together in such a way that it will equal dy dx. For instance, I'm looking at a dy du, and I'm looking at a du dx. Do you notice how the du here is on the denominator, and the du here is on the numerator, and we have a D, dy on the numerator, which we want, and a dx on the denominator, which we want. What operation can I put between this one and this one so the du's will be gone and I get dy dx? Yeah. You know what, look at this. If I say, well, let's just take dy du, let's multiply it. That looks like an A, doesn't it? Let's multiply it by du dx. The beauty of this notation is that those little pieces do act like something you can cross out, something you can simplify. So what happens to the du's in this case? They're gone. This right here is the chain rule. What it says is that dy dx will be equal to dy du times du dx. This is chain rule. That's the chain rule. Okay, so how do we use it in practice? Let's, let's apply it to this scenario, okay? So when I ask you for ddx of 3x squared minus 4 to the 100th power, who cares where you got that from? Can you do the derivative? Here's what it says. It says take your dy du take your dy du that's this okay, I'll show it to you that way. Take your dy du times your du dx. In our case that's the derivative with respect to u of u to the 100th. That's where we got this, right? Derivative with respect to u of u to the 100th. Are you seeing where that's coming from? Then it says times the derivative of the inside, the 3x squared minus 4. That's the du dx. Do you see that dy du is this thing? It's the derivative of your 
your function with respect to you. That's what this part is. Are you okay with that? The d, du dx, that's the derivative of what you call u. The derivative of what you call u is the inside part. If we take that derivative, it says multiply dy du times du dx. So take the derivative of the overlying function, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's, that's what this says to do. Uh, what was this again? Times, what was that again? Do you see a problem with this? Yeah, we have x's and we have u's. We want which one? Well, x's. Do you know how much u is equal to? Sure, that's why you had this over here. So if we can do that substitution, we go, okay, the x looks great to me, but the u doesn't look so great. I want to make that u back into what u equals. So let's do that. We'll get 100, 3x squared minus 4, because that's our u to what power? Don't forget about the 99th power. Don't forget about the exponent times 6x. Now, you could make it a little bit prettier, but I want to come back to this and talk about this for a second, okay? Because I want you to see the practicality of the chain rule. Uh, firstly, what are you going to do with this? this. You're going to do something with this. What are you going to do with the 6x? Multiply. Multiply by what number? Yeah, do that. Okay, don't leave it hanging out there as a time 6x at the end. Now, naturally, please don't, please don't do this. Don't distribute the 100. Okay, you can't do that. Because that's an exponent. That says in order to distribute the 100, you'd have to foil that out 99 times. Do you get it? Please, for heaven's sakes, don't do that. All right, don't do that. Just multiply this number times this number. And we get 600x three x squared minus four all to the 99th power. That's it. That's a pretty easy way to do a derivative, isn't it? Not too bad. Now, let's look at what actually happens here. Because I want you to see this. This is going to be, in general, what we did. Is there a way that you can get from here to at least, well, actually, probably this step. We can get almost from here to here in one step without showing a u, without showing a, a du dx and a dy du, without showing that stuff. I want you to think about what we're doing. Do you see what happens to the 100? What happens to the 100? Power rule. Yeah, that's basically just your power rule. Do you see it? the 100 comes down to the front. You leave this thing alone, right? That's in the parentheses. It says you leave it alone. Why do you leave it alone? Because you end up substituting back in the U. That's why, because with the composition, you're going to get that U back again. Do you see that? You're going to have some U here. You're going to get that. So we have a U back again. That means you don't change it inside. Where's this piece come from? Where's the 6X come from? Yeah. And this is called the general power rule. It's a corollary of the chain rule. The chain rule is the overall arching idea, but what we can do oftentimes with this is something called the general power rule. And it says the power rule works in general if you do this. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So general power rule. So when you ask me, well, wait, I thought you said there's only three rules. There, there really are. There's only the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. However, the general power rule is like a, a little piece of the chain rule, okay? You get the general power rule from the chain rule. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So the general power rule says... What if you need to take a derivative... of some function to some power. What if you need to take the derivative of some function to some power? Here's how you do it. This is called the chain rule. And here's how you do the chain rule. I can show it to you if you really want me to. This is what would happen. You'd say, okay, what's my, what's my function? You'd say y equals u to the n. True? Where u would equal f of x. Do you believe me? You follow still? That's what the chain rule would say. Well, this says, okay, if I took the derivative of u to the n, remember your power rule? Power rule says you bring down the exponent, you subtract one from it. True? 
this would say, okay, dy du would equal n u to the n minus 1. Follow me so far. du dx would be the derivative of f of x. That's, oh, how do I want to write it? I'll just say this. The derivative of f of x. You could write f prime of x. You could write that as well. Are you guys okay that the derivative of u to the n is n, u to the n minus 1, and the derivative of f of x is the derivative of f of x? Does that make sense to you? I'll write this way so we have a formula in just a second. Do you see the chain rule at work? We have dy du, we have du dx. So in order to find dy dx, we'll have dy du times du dx. Well, what that says is do a substitution. That's n u to the n minus 1 times the derivative of your function from the inside. How much is u? What's u equal to? Because we, we did that composition. What was u in our case? So do that substitution back into there. And what you end up getting is n f of x to the n minus 1 d dx of f of x. Now, did we say anything about f of x at all? Do we make any qualifications about f of x? So then this should work in general, right? Anytime we have a function raised to some power, we could use the chain rule on it every single time. We led to a formula. I just invented this formula for you. Did you guys see it? It's kind of cool, right? Invented the formula for you. We, we did a composition. We can do that. We took the derivative here. We took the derivative here. We know that to get dy dx, we multiply those two things then we just do our substitution back in for u. What that says is, if you want to take the derivative of some expression raised to some power, all you've got to do is take the derivative of the expression times the derivative of the inside. That's what you're doing. Uh, bring down the exponent as usual, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's what this says in, in English. Look at, look at what it says. Bring down the exponent as usual. Bring down the exponent as usual. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside, the inside. That's what that says to do. Raise your hand if you feel okay with that. So do you have to show me all this to do it? No, I just proved it for you. This, this is kind of a proof for you to be able to do that. You get it? So in English, if you want to hear this in English, bring down the exponent as usual, as you normally do for the power rule. That's why it's called the general power rule. So bring down the exponent like it's a power rule. Just multiply it by the derivative of the inside. You just can't forget about the derivative in the inside, because this thing matters for sure. If you don't have the 6x here, does it affect your problem? Yes. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, by a long shot. Okay, so that does matter. Bring down exponent and multiply by derivative of the inside. Would you like a couple examples to kind of work through this? And then I'll, after that, I'll show you some more applications of the chain rule, stuff that we can do with some trigonometry, which I know you're going to love, right? Uh, stuff you can do with that and that you can't forget to, that you need to do with that. I'll show you how to work with the chain rule. And then after that, uh, we'll talk about implicit differentiation if there's a little bit of time. Okay, so let's discuss this problem. If I want you to find dy dx, which 
choose what I want you to find. Could I just do this? Could I just take the derivative of this and this and this and leave it to the fourth power? The answer is no, no, because this is a composition. Do you guys see the composition? This you could cover the whole thing up and call it u, or sorry, call it, uh, yeah, call it u to the fourth. y would equal u to the fourth and u would equal this stuff. Does that make sense to you? We could do the chain rule here. Does this fall into the category of general power rule? Is it some function raised to an exponent? That's what we're looking for. Do you guys see the power rule in it? How do we get the power rule? That says, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the power rule just like we normally would. We'll bring down the exponent, we'll subtract one from it. Just don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So you tell me what to do now that we've talked about it. What do I do? Good, four goes down. Do I still have an expression here? Yes. yes. What's going to be on the inside of my expression? Do I change this at all from here to here? No, that's because that's the u, right? And you're going to be substituting back in for the u ultimately at the very end of any problem. So that inside, that's not going to change. That's this. Look at See how we still have a u and we substitute back in the original function to that? That's the original function here. You're still going to have that. So far so good? Wait a minute. Right now, this is so far so good? No. What's wrong? Don't really, you know what the biggest mistake people have? People do this, they bring that exponent, and they forget to subtract from it. It's, derivatives are not that hard, right, of doing the general power rule. You know you're supposed to bring it down and subtract. But people always forget the exponent. Don't forget the exponent. So we do bring it down, sure, but that 4, that was an exponent of 4. We subtract 1 from it, we're going to get 3. Is that okay? Is, are we done now? No, no. We're, we're good though. We bring down the exponent, we subtract one from it, and now you get to do this part. The derivative of whatever the inside is. The f of x is the inside of your general power rule. It says, do this, do the power rule, no problem, leave that alone, and then multiply by the derivative of whatever was inside. Well, let's see. We got 4. Got the same thing. Notice how the calculus is done. Do you see how, what I mean by follow the DDX? Do you see what I mean by that? It's all about where the DDX is. That's what your calculus is. So here, this is staying the same. The only thing we got to worry about is that over there. What is it? If I leave it just like this, am I going to mark points off from you? Yes. Absolutely. Why? I need to have the parentheses firstly. That says I'm multiplying the whole entire expression. Now, you got a couple choices. You can move this thing out front, and you can distribute that 4 into there if you'd like. Just make sure you have parentheses around it if you do it. Does that make sense? So that you might see a problem end like this. You might see a problem end like this. Or you might see the problem end like this. Just make sure you have parentheses there, or otherwise, yeah, I'm going to mark you off, because that's a different uh, statement. Now, your question is, which one do you want, Mr. Leonard? And I go, as long as you need to hear, I'm happy with your calculus. Now, I want one of these two. I want one of those two out of you. What I can't have you do, don't keep going. Okay? There's no way you should ever foil this into the, actually it should be foil oil, right? Outside, inside, in order. But you should never do that because that's to the third power. You can't break the order operations. X ones come before distribution or multiplication does, okay? So you can't break this rule. But this, is, this would be perfectly appropriate. How many people feel okay with this so far? Are you ready to see that we've been doing this literally the entire time with our power rule? See, the general means encompasses all, right? So check this out. If I give you x to the sixth, just a simple example, and I say, why don't you take the derivative of x to the sixth? You know inherently that that is 6x to the fifth, right? Yeah. Okay, inherently. That wasn't inherent, I guess, because I taught it to you. But you know it, nonetheless. But if you applied, if you applied the, the general power rule of this, check it out. If you said, oh, well, that's a function in terms of x. I'm going to write that a little better so you can really see it. If I said, that's a function in terms of x, could you do the general power rule to it? And the answer is, yeah, you could. Check it out. 
you would do the 6. x to the 5th. Remember, that would be in parentheses, right? Because that's your function. Times the derivative of whatever's inside. Only this time the inside is x. What's the derivative of x? That's why we didn't have to show that, because the derivative of the inside is always the same thing. It's always just x. Do you get it? We've been doing the general power rule. We've been doing the chain rule the whole time. It just it was simpler because we didn't have that inside. So that would become one, and you get six x to the fifth. Interesting. We've been doing it. That's why it's called the general power rule, and we had the power rule before. You ready to keep going? Yes. Okay. Let's try a few more. We're going to start building on this idea, though. Give me two ways to do that problem. Distribution is one of them. Give me another way. And you have two ways to do this problem, right? As soon as I do this, do you still want to distribute? No, in fact, if they gave that to you before, that would be how you had to do that, right? Because there was no way to get rid of that 3 for you without foiling that all out and then distributing. Or foiling at least this out and then using product rule. In fact, maybe you had to do that on a couple of your examples and it's like, err, darn exponents. But now let's look at this for, for what it is. This is a derivative. Can you see a product rule in it still? Yes. Can you see a general power rule in it right now? Yes. Question is, which one comes first? General power rule. Well, half of you are right. <laughs> which half is the question? That's the half. That's the question. Uh, which one, working from the outside in, which one encompasses more of the problem? You should be able to say this. You should be able to say this whole thing has to do with, hmm, does the whole thing have to do with the general power rule? Which means, is that exponent of 3 applied to the whole thing right now? Then that does not come first. Is the product rule applied to the whole thing right now? Then that comes first. Does that make sense to you? It'd be the same as this question. Which one would come first, a general power rule or a quotient rule? What do you think? Quotient. Definitely a, yeah. The general power rule is only applied to this little top part, right? It doesn't encompass the whole problem. The quotient rule encompasses the whole problem. That would come first, work from the outside inside. Now, if I did this, you'd hate me, first off. <laughs> Which would come first in this case? Chain, chain rule. Chain rule. In our specific case, this would be, general you can say chain, chain rule, that's fine. This would also be called the general power rule. Do you see it? General power rule. And then you would do the quotient rule. Then general power rule. And then general power rule inside of that. Yeah. Okay, that would be nasty. <laughs> One way that you could make this easier if you're looking at it, uh, you could take both the, this exponent and say, okay, this is now to the tenth, and that's to the fifth. That might make it actually a little bit easier. But starting out, you would see the general, this, I'm just making a point here, you'd see the general power rule first. Do you see what I'm talking about? You see the product rule first here. It encompasses the whole problem. And that's how you diagnose these things. What do you do first? Whatever's encompassing the whole problem. And then you work your way inside and you follow the DDX and the DDX will tell you what to do. Are you ready to do this problem? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So first thing we see, okay, connecting this thing is a multiplication. That means a product rule, set up the product rule. Go for it. This one? The cube root of that is going to stay in with that function. Just do the product rule right now, and we'll talk about the next part later. Just do the product rule and set it up. Don't take the derivatives yet, just set up the product rule. Okay, set up the product rule. I want you to take no, don't do the derivative, just set up the product rule. The product rule should say the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Did you all, were you all able to do that? So this is what I mean by that. The derivative, the derivative of the first 
times the second. Is that the second? No. Okay. That's the second. Yes. That three has to tag along with that piece if you're going to do the product rule. Richard, have you got that far so far? Okay, good deal. You have the exponent, right? Then you do a plus and you do derivative of the first times second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Do you yes. For us, here's what it said. This was the first function in x, and this was the second function in x. It was being multiplied, right? So you have to take those two, just those two pieces. That's what you were doing here. Kind of tricky, aren't I? I'm always like that, I think. I hope you will feel all right with this so far. I'll try to be more straight on the next one. Now you follow the ddx, and you just do what it tells you to do, because that's your calculus. So we just take derivatives piece by piece as they appear. So piece by piece as they appear says, can you take the derivative of this thing right there? Yes. That's actually quite an easy one. What's the derivative of that? Two. So this says, all right, 2. Do I take the derivative of that? Heavens no. No, it has no ddx. Do I take the derivative of this? So I just write it. And now we get down to this piece. And notice how it's basically the product rule lets you break it up as problems within problems within problems. None of it's going to get any harder than this. It's just you might have more rules encompassing it. So if you can follow the rules down, you know the three rules, uh, the chain rule, quotient rule, product rule. You know how to go from the outside inside. Just follow your DDX. You'll be okay. Now, that's easier said than done. All right? I know some of these problems are very tasking. But if you can do that, that's the fundamentals here. You look from the outside inside, start with the big rules, and follow the DDX, and then use rules within rules within rules. So on this one, we look at this, and you say, can I do that piece, that derivative? It's basically a problem within a problem. What's the derivative of x squared minus 5 to the third? What rule do you need for that? Chain rule, chain rule or the corollary to that, because this is a specific version of the chain rule, is called the what? General power rule. So this was a product rule, and inside of that had a general power rule. General power rule says, well, what I'm going to do is, so for this piece, for this piece, what do I do? So notice I'm here right now. I bring down the three, very good. What do I have next, please? Good, I don't change the inside. I don't change that to the what exponent? Oh, don't forget that. And then I'm done, right? Ah, okay. Times the derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule. That is the general power rule. Times the derivative, and I want you to write it out. I want to see this. I don't want you doing the math in your head right now. We're just learning. We're just barely learning it. Okay. I know that eventually some of you are going to be able to just do these in your head. In this class, for right now, wait till you get to 4B to do that. For right now, I want to see your work that way. If you make a mistake, I'm not saying you will, but if you do, I want to see where that's happening. Do you get me? Do you get me? Show me those steps. Okay, uh, times the derivative of x squared minus 5. Remember that we're multiplying here. Are there any other ddx's to take care of? Hmm? Yeah, okay, I hope so. Yes, we do. We have a ddx. What's the derivative of this little piece? So if you follow that ddx down, that tells you where to take the derivative of, or what to take the derivative of. So we're basically all done up until that point. We have 2 x squared minus 5 to the third. Let's not mess up any exponents. 2x minus 3 times 3 x squared minus 5 to the second times what is the derivative of that little piece? Two. Notice how we kind of eliminated some of the bigger rules, right? right off the bat. We used product rule that helped us down to just have one more rule left. We had general power rule. Now we have just a very simple power rule. And we're good to go. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Your calculus is over with. Now we're going to make it prettier by using a little bit of algebra, and you're going to see something that happens often when you have a product rule that involves a general power rule. You're going to see some pieces that keep reappearing. See how that thing appeared again with our product rule? Because you had the original, and then you took a general power rule where that piece shows up again. A lot of times that happens when you do the product rule and you have a general power rule. You're going to want to factor that at the end. It makes things a lot nicer. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we go ahead and maybe make this just a little bit prettier, we have 
this. This becomes 6x. Like that. Are you okay with that so far? Yes, no? Do you see the factorization of what I'm talking about? Yeah. We have this, this big factor and this big factor right there. We can pull out, what can we pull out of that? If I pull out the x squared minus 5 squared, what I end with is 2, 2 still there, x squared minus 5 to what power? Good, because I pull out two of those things. Does that make sense to you? Plus 6x, 2x minus 3. Are there, are there any of these left? No. I've factored that out. Notice you could get the same thing if you distribute. This distributes and give you this. This distributes and give you that. Okay, so that, that's factorization right there. We should have feel alright with that so far. The next thing you do, distribute this in combined like terms. If you distribute this in combined like terms, you'll have a much simpler looking polynomial. So in here we get our 2x squared minus 10. We get our 12x squared minus 18x. <coughs> if I did it right, did I do it right? If we combine some of those like terms, I'm seeing 14x squared. I'm seeing minus 18x minus 10. Now, hopefully it's not just me, but this thing looks a whole lot more concise than that thing. Does it not? It looks, it looks prettier, it looks better, it looks more concise, more wrapped up. And that's where we want to end our derivatives, if we can make it that far. Show of hands, how many people feel okay with what we've, we've done so far? At least up to the calculus being done part. Are you okay with the calculus being done part? After that, it's just algebra, some manipulation. That's okay. We can do that. By the way, this is the part where people lose track in this class what you're actually doing, okay? They just get to the, they go, oh yeah, general drive rule, and drive rule, and push rule, and chain rule. They lose track of what you're doing. What did we just do? We found the what? The slope. The slope. That's all we're doing, it's find the slope. This is the slope. This is the formula for the slope of that curve at any point that I want. So could I still find the equation of a tangent line at a point? Sure. I plug in the x coordinate to here to find my slope. I plug my x coordinate into here to find my point. Then use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And that's all we're doing. Okay, we're finding slope. Or if this is a position curve, we're finding velocity or rate of change. Or if it's a cost function, we're finding uh, marginal cost, marginal profit, things like that. Very interesting stuff. Let's try a few more. I need to show you how the. Uh, the chain rule is going to affect something to do with the, like a trig function, and that will probably be up about our day. Does the chain rule still apply? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Do I have a function within a function, basically? That's what you're asking. Because if, if you do, then you have a chain rule. Do I have a general power rule here? Yeah. Oh, explain that. Explain how I have a general power rule, because I don't see an exponent right now. So in order to do this, well, hopefully you remember this from the last couple of sections. In order to do the, the derivative, you really need to represent roots as exponents, right? Because we know we, we deal with that. We subtract one from them. You can't subtract one from a square root unless you write it as a one half. So first thing to do is go, yeah, all right, I know that this is 5x squared minus 1 in parentheses to the one half power. And that right there says, aha, aha, look, if you can cover it up, you're talking about a composition. 
uh, within within parentheses you're talking about composition. That means chain rule applies. In this case, it's an exponent, so the general power rule applies. Why don't you go ahead and try it? Go for it. You're you're at that point at this at this stage. Remember, I really don't want you doing the work all in your head. I want to see the steps right now. I want to see the DDX written out. Did you make it that far? 1 half 5x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 half? Cool, inside doesn't change for now. And then we take the derivative of the function itself, the inside function of our composition, or the piece of our composition. If we take that derivative, then we're just about done. Did you get the 10x too? We got exactly that on their paper. Good for you. Now make it a little prettier. Here's how you can make it a little prettier. The one half and the ten that simplifies. That simplifies and gives you five. So we have five x, and then we have this five x squared minus one to the negative one half. How you can write that appropriately would be, since you started as a square root, you probably want to end with some sort of root. We want five x on the numerator. Five x on the numerator. Five x squared minus one and a square root on the denominator. You see where, why it's on the denominator firstly? Because mm -hmm. at negative one half that moves to the denominator, the one half becomes positive, that's a square root. Can I cross out the five x and the five x squared? Mm -hmm. Oh heck no. No, 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 we can't do that. All right, I see that all day long. All right, angry. But no, we can't do that. Are you ready to move on from the general power rule? Because that's about all I can show you with that. I mean, it doesn't change after this. If you can do these couple problems, you're, you're okay so far. Are you okay so far? If it's given to you that way, what I'm expecting most of the time is, is I, if I give it to you as exponents, exponents are fine. If I give it to you as roots, change it back to roots. Can you do that derivative? That would be what, folks? Oh, very good. You're memorizing it. Fantastic. Can you do that derivative? The answer is no, not with what you know. Well, actually, yes, because we just talked about chain rule. But not what you knew before today. The answer would be no. But let's look at it. Do you have a composition going on in this? Which means, can you cover up a piece of it and get some other function, basically? If I cover this part up, if I say, cover up the inside. We're always talking about covering up the inside. Cover up the inside and I say, well, let's let y equals cosine of u, and u equals whatever's under my hand, would that be an appropriate composition? Because if I let the u go in for u, in fact, x to the fourth go in for u, then I get that back again, right? Well, if we find our dy du, what's dy du here, ladies and gentlemen? We just talked about it. Negative sign what? U. Negative sine u and du dx. What's du dx? And we knew that dy dx is dy du times du dx. True? True story. Mm -hmm. This is negative sine u because that's dy du. That's this times du dx, which is 4x cubed. dy du, du dx, dy du times du dx. That's chain rule. We just talked about that. That's this right here. What's the one last thing that I need to do? 
Why, why do I need to substitute? Two different Don't want to end with u's and x's. We'll make it prettier, but that's the one I want to talk about. This will ultimately become negative 4x cubed sine of x to the fourth. That would be the derivative of that curve. Are you okay with how to do that? Do that 4x cubed out front. Notice what you can't do. Oh, please, goodness, don't do this. Please don't, please. Please don't ever multiply those. That's an angle. This is not. This you cannot make 4x to the seventh. If you do that, I'm going to burn your paper. I'm burning. <laughs> Gone. What well, homework? I didn't see any homework from you. I'm just burning. It's an embarrassment. I want you to do that. Just kidding. I wouldn't burn it. But I will go, no, with like five exclamation points and underline it and scribble on it and stomp on it. That's about it. I'm not going to kick a puppy. <laughs> not, that, not that bad. But Are you okay with this? Here's what this says in English. We'll stop here. This says, in order to do the chain rule with this type of thing, you really don't need to show me this. This is just the underlying work. Here's what it says in English. Well, I have a little bit, a little bit of calculus. It says, if you want to take the derivative of a composition the derivative of a composition such as we just had right now, Here's what this said to do. It says, I want you to take the derivative, look what it does, please. It says, take the derivative of cosine, right? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative, negative sine, and leave the inside alone. Does that look familiar? That's exactly what we do with general power rule, right there. Take the derivative of the outside function, the, the, the cosine in this case. But then you just can't forget to multiply by the derivative of whatever the inside was. And that's what this says. Take the derivative of the inside and multiply it. That's what we did with general power rule. A lot of people do this. They will give me this, they give me this all day long. Oh, it kills me. They say, oh, yeah, answer is negative sine of uh, 4x cubed. I get that all day long. See the common mistake that people would make to get that. They go, oh, yeah, derivative of cosine, negative sine. Derivative of the inside, 4x cubed. Is this right? No because they have not applied the chain rule. Chain rule says you have a composition here. You need to take the derivative of your function, sure, leave the inside alone, then multiply by the derivative inside. So this says you take, I'm going to use a kind of combination of rules here, or uh, sorry, notation. You take f prime of x, I'm sorry, f prime of g of x, times g prime of x. That's what you do. Derivative of the outside, Leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. And that's exactly, do you see that over here? Do you see what that means for us here? OK, good. Derivative of the function times the derivative of the inside. And that's what we're doing. How many people feel OK about what we've talked about so far? I will start here next time with a couple more chain rules, and then we'll keep on moving. Thing, right? So uh, today, we are practicing. All we are practicing today is applications of the three rules that we talked about. Chain rule, which includes the general power rule, the product rule, and the push rule. That, that's pretty much it. Uh, what you know from the chain rule is this. This says in English, you take the derivative of the function, leave the inside alone, and you multiply by the derivative of the inside. If you can remember that for the chain rule, you're good to go. We'll pro start <coughs> simply, then I'm going to start building on some nasty looking problems. Oh my gosh. And they'll take us maybe the whole board to do. Uh, but you need to see them because your homework should be like that too. Okay, I don't want to leave you hanging on, on this stuff. So we're going to do examples. We're going to do examples pretty much all day. Okay, sine of 4x to the fifth. Uh, a couple questions for you. First thing, is this a product rule? Okay, so product rule doesn't apply because this is a, actually a function. This is really a composition. You know, a lot of people really don't understand trigonometry. They go, oh, yeah, it's sine times 4x to, 4x to the fifth, which is not really what we're doing, right? You can't take, if I just give you sine, that's meaningless. That doesn't mean sine, that means a sin, right? Now, if I give you sine with an angle, that means sine, okay? I'm not going to write sin on your paper. You're not going to write sin. If you write sin without this, you're sinning. In math, that you're sinning, right? You have to have this part. You have to have something with it. If you just have this, that, 
right? That, that's not, sign by itself is meaningless. It must have something attached to it. So this is not a product rule. What this is is a composition of two functions, a composition of 4x to the fifth into sine. What that means whenever you see a composition is a chain rule will work. If you can cover up a piece of it and you still have a function, that means it's a chain rule. You okay with that? That's chain rule right there. So if we use the chain rule, the chain rule says this. It says in order to find dy dx, you're going to take the derivative of the function, yes, but you're going to at first leave the inside of it alone. So what's the derivative, everybody, of sine? Cosine. So we do the cosine, yes. Do we take the derivative of 4x to the fifth right here? No. No. That's going to stay long. That, that's, that's this part. Okay, that's the g of x. That says 4x to the fifth. This says you don't even change g of x, and we didn't change g of x. Times, ah, the derivative of g of x. That's where you get the derivative of the inside. You don't mash it all together. You don't take this derivative and the derivative and put it right here. That's not what you do. This should be cosine of 20x to the fourth. That's not it. You take this derivative later, and you multiply it. And I want to see it written out, 4x to the fifth, like that. And then you take the derivative. What's the derivative of 4x to the fifth? 20x to the fourth. That's where we're getting that from. So we're going to have a 20x to the fourth times cosine, you don't even need that times, of 4x to the fifth. That right there, that's our derivative. That was a chain rule. So on the test, you want to see ddx? Yeah, I absolutely want to see that. Okay. Um, what, the way I'm showing you things in class is the way I want to see them on your test. Because I'm, I'm going to grade each little part. I'm going to look for this. I'm going to look for this. Right, there's only two steps. Don't get lazy and not show me your steps. You okay with that one? Okay, that's a pretty basic one. We're going to start <coughs> building them up now. I'm going to start incorporating more and more rules so you can start seeing them. You ready for it? Yeah. yeah. Let's do this. You know, a really good note to write down here, or at least think about? You want to think about the rules that you're going to have to do before you start your problem. Uh, mostly you think about the most encompassing rule here. So when you look at this problem, what does this actually mean? What does the cosine squared x to the fourth mean? <coughs> cosine x to the fourth. Write it like that. Give yourself a chance at this problem. Instead of just leaving it like this, maybe you write it as cosine x to the fourth squared. Because that's what it really actually means there, doesn't it? We just take a shortcut and put that square there oftentimes. You okay with that so far? Now let's think. Start with our rules. Which rule encompasses the whole problem? Is it a chain rule? Is it a general power rule? I see two of them right now. What? But I'm going to use a specific, t I know they're both chain rules, all right, so they're going to be more specific than that. Which one is, should we do first? This part, or should we deal with the two first? The two. And what does that two say to do? That's the general power rule. Now, it is a chain rule, but it's a specific chain rule. It's like a corollary to the chain rule. It's called the general power rule. So what this says is, I have, if you can cover it up, remember that, it's a chain rule. It's a specific chain rule because it has a power. It's this general power rule. General power. <coughs> and then inside of that, you're probably going to have a chain rule. Do you see the chain rule as well? If we start with the, the largest rule, I'll say largest because it's the one that comes with everything. If you start with that, then you can follow your DDX. But it's all about how you start. You've got to think about that first. Are you with me? So let's go ahead and do our, our DDX. Uh, what happens to this thing? What are we going to do? So this two goes out front. All right. And I'm going to have, what, what's next? Come on, tell, tell me. Does this change for my general power rule? So I'm still going to have a cosine x to the fourth. Uh, to what power? So do I need a bracket with a little one? Is this OK on how to get there? And then I'm done? No. what? Of just x to the fourth? What's the derivative that should come next? 
Remember when you do a general power rule, you cover that whole thing up, right? You go, okay, take the derivative of what's under my hand. It says you move the two down, you subtract one from it. That's great, and you don't change what's under my hand. That's this part. But then you have to take the derivative of everything that's under my hand. Do you get me? So it's not just x to the fourth, it's what? The whole thing. No, 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 not brutal. Fun. Tonight. <laughs> yes, tonight. <laughs> Richard, have you okay with that so far? You see where you see why you have a cosine there. Do you see why you have a cosine there? This one you do not change. This one you take the derivative of the entire inside function. That's how the general power rule, aka the chain rule, works. Derivative of the function times the derivative of the inside. But now you're done with the calculus up to this point. Now you follow your ddx, and this has broken down your problem, made it a little bit easier. Can you take the derivative of cosine x to the fourth? Yes. What rule is that? Chain. That's the chain rule. The chain rule says you take the derivative of your function times the derivative of your inside. That's what it says to do. The derivative of your function times the derivative of the inside. So you tell me, does any of this change? We'll take the derivative of cosine x to the fourth. What's the derivative of cosine x to the fourth? Let's think about that. It says you take the derivative of, it says derivative of your overlying function. Okay, that's the, that's the thing that you're composing into. So derivative of cosine, you need to take that first. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine. Okay, so I'm going to put that in a bracket because it's negative. Negative sine. Hey, negative sine of what? Is it still x to the fourth or 4x cubed? Good, because chain rule says you do this, but you leave this piece alone for just a second. You leave that alone. In order to find the derivative of this, you multiply by that. So we're starting to build these rules on top of each other, and you really got to be good at what rule comes first. If you are, then you follow the DDX, and it's just fine. But you gotta, you got to find that first rule. Once you do that, we said, okay, this probably should be written like this. This says general power rule. You bring it down. You leave it alone. You multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's where we're getting that from. You okay with that? After that, calculus done. Just, just keep on writing. Keep on writing. This DDX says take the derivative of this thing. Now, this is a chain rule. Chain rule says I take the derivative of cosine. Got it? But I leave the inside alone. Just like you left the inside alone here. I leave the inside alone. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's where that's coming from. Rich, you have to feel alright with that so far. Good, alright. We're almost done. We only have one little teeny derivative to take. What is it? Yeah, you know what? Every time you do a step, it makes it easier. Sometimes. <laughs> but every time you use a rule, it breaks it down in little pieces. For you. Times, what is that? Four. Four. Cool. Negative. Or sorry, 2 cosine x to the 4th times negative sine x to the 4th times 4x cubed. <coughs> Just make it maybe a little prettier up here. A little prettier would mean you have a negative, you've got a 4x cubed, and you have a 2. They're all being multiplied together. You see the multiplication? Take that stuff together. So this will be 8 negative. Negative 8 x to the 3rd, then the cosine or the sine, and then the sine. And that's how I'd like to see your problem. After this, it's, it's just algebra. It's just putting a couple things together. You have 2 times negative 1 times 4. That's your coefficient. That's negative 8. The x to the third, we typically like to bring that up front. Can you follow that? Yes, no. If yes, great. If not, do you have a question about it? You guys are here? Are we good?
my middle guys. Yeah. You good? People at home? Just kidding. <laughs> Can't see you. Uh, you guys on left? What if I could see you? They'd freak you out, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> People in the world. Anyway. It doesn't matter which word of the sign the cosine go in. No, that doesn't matter. No. <laughs> it, it, this is technically right. Right. This is it. So no matter how you, because multiplication is commutative, associative, it doesn't matter how you group them, how you put in order, we typically just write numbers and single variables first, and then sines and cosines. That's just how we do it. Can we move on? Are you ready to move on? To one similar. Is there a choice? I guess you could just leave. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to stay, no. No choice. It's actually kind of a more friendly problem, a little bit. Do you see why it's a more friendly of a problem? <clears throat> if I had done this, would it be a friendly problem? Okay. No, it would be your enemy. If I did that, what would you do first? A chain rule? They're both chain rules, but a chain rule or a general power rule? General general power. That would be just very similar to that problem. You would have to bring down the four, all of this to the third power derivative of the entire inside thing. Do you see it? Without the power, Without the power, what are we talking about here? That's the chain rule. Do you see the, if you can cover something up and you still have a function, that's typically a chain rule. So we still have a chain rule right here. It's not product rule. That's not a product. It's tangent of something. That's a chain rule. It's composition. Well, let's do it. What's, how's the chain rule work? What should we do first, please? Wait, do what now? Okay, cool. So leave this alone. Take the derivative of that thing. So this says, I'm going to have, oh, tan. What's tan? Very good. Make some flashcards. Know those derivatives. Secant squared. Does the inside change for us right now? OK. Then? No. No. Multiply the inside. Can you tell me what the inside is here? Is it tan of this or just this? Just, just that part. This is just a chain rule. It says a derivative of tan is secant squared, leave the inside alone, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's what the chain rule says to do in English. Got it. Secant squared, cool. Inside doesn't change, derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule at work. Not too bad. What are we going to do? Just follow the DDX. This is basically done. You're going to get a secant squared. But where people often forget to, what people often forget to do is this piece of it. They really often forget to do the chain rule. They'll do this for me, but they'll forget this part. I can't have you forget that part. That's a big part. That's a really big part. Or they will do secant squared, and then they'll take the derivative and just mash it together. So if you're giving me this, Well, that's, that's not even nearly right. You've changed the angle, you've, you've messed that problem up, all right? That's not what we're talking about. You can't just take derivative of this and derivative of that. This is definitely a chain rule because it is a composition. See the difference there? Okay. So for us, we go, no, 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 no. Not that. This is, what is it? Oh, yeah, I just wrote it. <laughs> Another question, can I distribute that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Why can't you? Why can't you? What is that? It's an angle. That's an angle. It's actually an angle that's related to oh, this. Oh, no, 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 not this. I, I mean this. I thought you meant no, distribute these the two. Whole thing. Okay. Can you distribute these two? No. Negatory. No, no, no. <clears throat> this, that's not an angle. This is attached to that secant squared, okay? That's part of it. You can't change the angle. You can't change the angle. Uh, what we can do is move this to the front so that we, we don't distribute it. Um, you probably wouldn't want to take this thing in and you take the whole thing. You wouldn't want to do that. Okay, it's already factored for you nicely. Don't do that. Just leave it as 6x minus 2 
secant squared 3x squared minus 2x. Tell me one huge thing I'm going to mark you off on. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Still okay? Yes. All right. Ready to keep going? Couldn't we also put the seat in the front seat? That? Yeah. One front seat, right? Yeah, like that. <laughs> like that? Yeah. You could? It would be irrelevant, but you could. And just keep it easier to keep my hand. Okay. See, now we're having fun. <laughs> sort of. No, no, no. You know what? I'll be no, I'm not gonna be nice. Um there. Great way to say things. I was just gonna give you an X, but I want you to see what happens. So this will be a little bit more difficult. Trust me, you want the more difficult ones now. That way your homework seems easier. If I just give you all the easy ones now, your homework should seem like a bear. So you want to do that. Okay, I'm lost. What do I do? Why, why would you say a general power rule? Okay. So chain, chain rule, the general power rule, same thing, but we're going to say general power rule when we have the exponent so we can classify this a little bit better in our heads, okay? So if I say chain rule right now, me, I'm looking here. I'm looking there. So this, I'm going to call that a general power rule for this class. Okie dokie. Do you see the general power rule at work? See how it covers the whole entire expression? So perhaps... Write it this way. Because we know in order to take these derivatives, we've got to have exponents. <clears throat> so far, so good? Am I? Oh, I am. Shoot. Better? Yeah. Much more better. Okay, tell me what to do. Come on, you guys should be rolling with this stuff at this point. This should be like, okay, well, we're getting there. Not perfect, but we're getting there. What do we do? Good. Because this is general power rule, right? General power rule says bring it down. Write whatever's on the inside. Notice how we're not changing that. The inside does not change for our chain rule, which also includes a general power rule. Uh, do I still have an exponent? Or do I just get get rid of that exponent? Do I still have an exponent here? Yes. Don't forget about that exponent, man. Oh my gosh. If you just move down the one half and forget that, that's a big deal because you've eliminated the square root on the denominator there. So this this really needs that negative one half. Do you see where the negative one half is coming from? Yes. Can I just have you do? You feel okay with it? Now what do I do? Okay. Times derivative. Take that to rubber roll. Yeah, take the derivative of the inside. Take the derivative inside. So general power rule says bring it down, subtract one, just like you normally would with any power rule. Only now you have to multiply by the derivative of whatever you covered up, whatever you ignored for a second. In this case, it's the entire expression. So notice how before you start taking all these derivatives, you have the same thing twice. Do you see that? Same thing twice, and then you, I'm losing some of you. You with me? Mm -hmm. Then you take the derivative of that little piece. This, calculus done. Just hang on to it for a while. Now let's look at the derivative of this nasty junk here. What is the derivative of this thing? Can you take it a derivative piece by piece? Is it okay when I'm adding and subtracting? Yeah. Do I need a special rule to take the derivative of x cubed? No. Not at all. I can just do what's the derivative of x cubed? Yes. Beautiful. So don't outthink these problems. The only time you need special rules is when you have a quotient, a product, or a chain rule. That's it. So when you get this little piece, 
This should be a problem within a problem. Now you look at this, you go, how do I take the derivative of x cubed? No problem, it's being added. Remember, derivatives are separable by addition and subtraction. That's okay. So I just take this and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do 3x squared. Not a problem. That's fine. Can I take the derivative of cosecant x cubed? Can I take it directly or do I need a special rule for it? Do you see the chain rule here? Chain rule says, sure, it is cosecant, but if there's something special in there besides an x, that means a chain rule because that's a composition just like this one was, just like oh, what's the one? Just like that one was, just like that this one was. That's a composition. You need a chain rule there. If you just give me the derivative of cosecant with x cubed or the derivative of cosecant with 3x squared, you're not hitting the money on this class, all right? You're, you're missing the chain rule. You're missing some factors of x. You miss a whole lot of stuff here. So this is great, sure. Now let's take the derivative of cosecant x cubed. What's the derivative? The chain rule says take the derivative of cosecant. So what's the derivative of cosecant? Negative cosecant. Okay. Let me change it to a bracket too. Negative cosecant cotangent of of what? Good, because this says the chain rule. You take this derivative, great, I just do that, but you leave the inside alone for now. Wouldn't that be cosecant x to the third cotangent x to the third? Or is it, is it okay to leave it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Did I forget? Oh, I did forget that. Shoot. I knew something looked funny. Thank you. So this says when you do this, Cosecant is cosecant cotangent. So cosecant x was cosecant x cotangent x. What our x is is x to the third in this case. So we go, okay, x to the third, x to the third. <laughs> now what? Thank you. <coughs> What's the inside? x to the third is q. Sure, it looks ridiculous. Yeah, I know that. But can you do it? Do you see where it's all coming from, how it's all fitting together? Is, is it really, really all that bad? Not really. It's just you've got to be careful, really careful. I mean, the only, the, probably the hardest thing is memorizing cosecant. There you go. Hardest thing here is derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Hopefully that's right. Is that right? Just check your notes. Because right. here, well, general power rule, sure, we got that down. Calculus is done. Here, derivative of this one is very easy, 3x squared. Derivative of this one, that's chain rule. This is negative cosecant cotangent. You do not change the inside. You multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's going to be 3x squared. That's where we're getting 3x squared. Are you with me on this so far? Okay, let's see if I have room for this stuff. Let me go right here. So one half all this to the negative one half three x squared negative cosecant. Cotangent and lastly we have a little piece 3x squared. Hope that fit. I think so. <coughs> oh, uh, sure. Um, no, the 3x squared is that going to get multiplied with both of those terms? The the x cubed plus you mean here and here? Right. Or did it just stay with cosecant cotangent? This right here ends the parentheses right there. So that 3x squared, this 3x squared is not associated with that x cubed. Right? So this does not get distributed to here. This right here is 3x squared plus this entire nasty looking expression. Okay, that's what that is. 
So when we try to simplify this just a little bit, let's look what happens. We're going to get 1 half x cubed plus cosecant x cubed to the negative 1 half. We're going to get a big bracket. 3x squared doesn't change. You don't distribute to that. That was just a standalone small derivative 3x squared. This, we're going to pretty this up a little bit. Positive, negative, plus, minus, what's that going to be? Negative. Minus. I'm going to move the 3x squared out front. So this will be minus 3x squared cosecant x cubed cotangent x cubed. And that's your group. That's pretty nasty. Can you follow it? Yes or no? Yeah? Or like, ooh. There's no simple way. So can you, would it be correct if you, if you would go 3x squared minus 3x squared cosecant x cubed cotangent x cubed over two sure. times? Sure. I'm going to show you that right now. So if you do want to put this back into this format, this would be. I mean, like, do you want us to, or can we just leave it as that? At this point, it could go either way. If I give it to you as a root, probably make it back as a root. That's generally the idea. Give it to you as exponents, leave them to exponents. Um, also, one more thing, if some of you guys want to get fancy with this and factor out 3x squared, you'd have 3x squared times parentheses 1 minus that. Uh, sometimes identities will help with that. Sometimes you can do identities. A lot of 1 minus stuff when you have squares happens. Uh, this thing, I don't know if you can simplify, simplify that anymore or not. Because um, I, I made stuff off my head. But what you could do, one last final thing, would be this. If you made it there, if you can make it there, that's fine for me. That's great. So we did general power rule. We got it. Here's inside not changing. Derivative of the inside. Got it. We're going to do 3x squared. Derivative of this is a chain rule. Chain rule says negative cosecant x, cotangent x. So we leave that inside alone. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. And then after that, it's a little bit of simplification. Raise your feel okay with this problem. Sure, they're nasty. Yeah, I get it. I mean, they don't look fine, but they're useful. What did you just find? <coughs> yeah. Slope. All this means is M. It's slope. <laughs> M. M for this. I think Kurt might look at it. I hate to be dealing with that graph. Oh, yeah, I don't even know what that looks like. Not a clue. <laughs> a little bit. It probably all looks squiggly lines all over the place. Don't know. <laughs> don't really care, honestly. <laughs> What you want to do first? You want to do the hard one or the harder one? Harder. harder. You want to do the harder one? Yeah. All right, you asked for it. We have three more actually. The hardest for last two and three more. Yeah. Notice one thing, please. Uh, I could give this to you with a slightly different look. Check this out. If I gave it to you like this, would you verify that that's exactly the same thing? 
you probably, if, unless you have a, t a, a function of x up there, probably shouldn't use quotient rule here. So if you use quotient rule with this, it's going to explode in your face. <laughs> Paper, papers are going to be no! <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah, it's not going to handle this problem. <laughs> I need a special paper for that. Okay. They don't sell in stores. Uh, no, do this. Okay, if, unless you have a function of x, because you don't want to deal with that either. If you had a function of x and you move this up top and you're talking about product rule, you can do that, it's fine. But if that's just a constant, move that up for me, would you? That, and that way you just use a general power rule instead of a quotient rule. Quotient rule with this would be ridiculous. So verify that's the same. Then you can start looking at it. So we're going to identify what we're doing on this problem. I need you to see the pieces. What's the biggest piece? General, General power rule. Very good. General power rule encompasses this whole entire problem. Now let's, let's walk all the way through it. Within the general power rule, after we do that, we're going to come down to these two things, right? Yeah. What's the derivative of three? Zero. That's yeah. great. So we can, we'll be able to do that one nice and easy. How about this piece? What encompasses this? Just this. Is it product or chain? <laughs> Product, 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 and chain. Chain. product, and product encompasses the whole thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, within the product rule, I'll take a derivative of x squared. That's, that's easy, 2x. And then I'll have to take a derivative of this little piece right here. What, what is this little chain piece? Rule. That's a chain rule. So we're doing general power rule. We will have a product rule within that. We'll have a chain rule within that. Okay. It's nice to think about those things, though. Nice to think of it just kind of like a, a graphic organizer or an organizer for advanced organizer for your thoughts. Ready? Yeah. Woo! Make me stuff two more after Yeah, yeah, but they're easier. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, sort of. Let's get to it. Come on, you tell me what to do. What am I going to do now? Move that. Drop your exponent. Keep everything in the same size. Good, keep everything the same. Yeah, negative two, right? No. You know how many mistakes I saw in your homework with that? Be careful. I mean, it, it, it would be so sucky if you knew how to do this stuff and you gave me a negative two here, right? That would suck. Because I'm like, oh, you know what you're doing. Gone. No, don't do that. It's negative four. Yeah, negative four. Subtract one from that. And then what now? Um, that we multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Write that out. Go for the derivative of the inside right now. When we say the inside, we mean the entire expression that you basically ignored. So you should have that on your paper. Do you have that on your paper? Yes. Hey, calculus is done here. You're done with that. We're just working on this piece over here. Let's take the derivative of this piece over here. So this is negative 3 x squared cotangent x squared, all right, negative 4, you're done with that piece, times. Probably want a bracket. You need a bracket. Big bracket. We have a lot of stuff. Big bracket. Why big bracket? Well, let, let's look at that. Uh, derivative of 3. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice one. If it was just another expression, we could have taken a simple derivative just like we did right here. Right, right there. So no problem. This is 0. I'm not even going to write the 0. Derivative of 3 is 0. It's constant. Let's fo focus on this one. You said what happens here? Change. Which is why we need a bracket because, oh, I'm sorry, no. Product rule. Product, 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 product Which is why we need a bracket because we're going to have an addition in there. Product means plus. You follow? So we need that bracket to organize that. This says, okay, I'm going to have 3 is gone. That was a 0. So this goes to 0. This says the derivative of the first times the second. Are you seeing how all our rules are coming back to haunt us? Or help us? How do you want to look at it? Uh, plus or minus, folks? Plus what? Finish this off. You gotta, you gotta say it. Derivative of cotangent x squared. Derivative of cotangent x squared. Okay, so x, I'm going to do x squared first. That's how I, I like to do it. Derivative of cotangent x squared. Finish off your bracket. Okay, quick head nod if you can head nod if you can follow that. Yes. Okay, cool. Follow our DDXs. Here, no DDXs. Here, DDX. Here, DDX. 
negative 3, 3 plus x squared cotangent x squared to the negative 4 power. Big bracket. Derivative of x squared, everybody, what is that? Well, that's nice. 2x cotangent x squared. Well, we got that done. Plus, I don't take the derivative of this x squared. I simply follow my ddx x squared. Tell me what happens here, please. What happens here? What happens? No, I can change all for sure, that's a chain rule. Do you guys see the chain rule? Absolutely chain rule. We predicted it right. We had general power rule, product rule, chain rule. So we had that right. Let's go ahead, let's do, follow the DDX, do that chain rule. Chain rule says, here I'm probably going to have at least a parenthesis to organize my thoughts a little bit. You don't necessarily need it here because it's just a chain rule. You're not adding or subtracting, but it's kind of nice to have. What happens with with that. What's the derivative of cotangent? Is it? Uh, Make sure. Negative cosecant squared. Uh, negative cosecant squared. Yeah. So I'd like it in parentheses just because I know it's a negative. I don't want to uh, misconstrue that as a minus sign. That's the only reason I have it here. So negative cosecant squared of, oh, of what, folks? Of what? 2x or x squared? x squared. Good. And then we're done, right? No. Oh, there's one thing. If you forget this, oh, it blows your whole problem up. But if we don't forget it, we have the problem right. Times what? 2x. Yeah. I want ddx of x squared. This is this parentheses. That's the bracket. We have five problems on our test. I can give you one. I can give you one problem, and it would show you everything. Seriously, I could. I'm not going to. Because if you get it wrong, oh, that sucks. <laughs> Here goes 20% of your grade. Ha, 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 suckers. No, I wouldn't do that to you. I might do that to you if I'm retiring. Just don't care anymore. Forget you guys. No, I wouldn't do that. That'd be worse than kicking a puppy. No, about the same level. Just kicking a puppy. <laughs> okay, so kick the puppy. General power. <laughs> Derivative. I kick the puppy for you. Derivative of the inside. Product rule. No problem. Chain rule. We got it. Derivative inside right here. That's going to give you two x, and we're done with the calculus. Last step is just to, to organize this little piece over here, and then we're good. We're fine. Also, if you wanted to write this on the denominator of a fraction, you could, all, you could do that. I'll show that to you as well. So we have negative 3, all this junk, This over here, since we have all being multiplied together, that's a negative, that's a 2x, and that's an x squared. A negative, a 2x, and an x squared. Tell me what I write. Good. Again, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could factor out a 2x here and a 2x here. You could do that if you wanted to. Uh, you could distribute the 3 across this, but not that because the exponent. Uh, so one last thing you, you, might, you might write. It would be all this stuff. times the negative 3, that does not move, it's not associated with that negative exponent, all over that. Would we be good with just one before it? Most cases, yeah. 
Actually, it depends on how I gave it to you. If I gave it to you like that with that negative exponent like I originally did, then would be good. that's fine. right? If I gave it to you like one over that, I probably would expect you to go back to that. So you see the pattern in it. Because if you see the pattern in it, uh, you can kind of guesstimate what these derivatives will at least look like. Because remember how this was one over this to the third? And now it's some crap over this to the fourth? That fourth power, and that doesn't come from nowhere, and that's still right there. Just you have all this junk associated with it. How many people feel okay with what we talked about so far? All right, we start one more. We won't get all the way through it. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Can you uh, factor out the 2x right there? Yes, yeah, I was saying that. You could factor out the 2x. This would become uh, negative 6x. This would be cotangent x squared. This would be minus x squared, cosecant squared x squared. Okay. And you could do that. If you want to get fancy, you know. I'm just trying to survive here. <laughs> All right. Two more. Two more. Maybe we'll just, you know what, we'll just talk about them. I think you've had enough. Uh, this, is, this is good enough. We'll, we'll, I'll put them on the board. We'll talk about what they are. And then uh, you can do them on your own. If you want answers to them, maybe I'll, I'll work them out and, and give you answers at the very end of this thing, uh, just so you can, you can see it on the board. But for right now, here's the problems I'll be doing, and then I want to see if you can do them on your own. Just kidding, just kidding. That would suck. <laughs> do you see how horrible that would be? Yeah. You could do it though, couldn't you? Couldn't you? Yeah. General, power General power rule. No. Closure rule. Closure rule. Chain rules. Chain rules. Okay. That would be Chain that. Power rules. <laughs> <laughs> rules. Yeah. Twice in there. What's this one? What's this one? Closure rule. rule comes first. Yes, for sure, because that encompasses the whole problem. Within the closure rule, do you see the chain rules? If you forget that that's going to have a 2x associated and it's going to have a 2x associated, that's going to affect your problem. So this is quotient rule, you write quotient rule first. You work it piece by piece, you do the chain rule for each little piece that you come across, and then you're done. Oh, all over the bottom square. Remember that? I'm going to work this out for you uh, after class, and I'll have this on the video if you want to check your, your answer. Try that one and see it. So I will work that out for you. The other one is this one. I told you they were going to get a little easier. A little easier. What's this one? Because I've given this on a test before, and I have people giving this all day long. 2x cosine 3. And I go, I kill you. <laughs> I kill you. Product rule. Not that. Product rule change. Product rule first, chain rule within that. Do you see it? And you can handle that one. Okay, we're going to stop there. I'm going to work those out. I'll have them posted in just a little while. Okay, so here we go. Hang on just a second. So we have quotient rule, chain rule here, chain rule here, derivative of a little piece, derivative of a little piece. The rest is just simplification. This one, here's the answer. So I'll get out of the way, uh, pause the video, and then <laughs> look at it. Crikey. 